Where are we with Georgia in terms of the historical, what you guys feel about them? I think if they win the national championship this year, that might be like, I am such a prisoner of the moment. You got to save me. But with the way the game is set up right now, yeah, it's like, is it less impressive or more impressive because they've had so much better players than everybody they've played except for the games that they won in the playoff. So it's like to win three championships in a row in the current climate with recruiting and Alabama being who they are and you know having to beat Ohio State and these teams that have been built up the last few years is super Im- impressive to me. But on the other hand, it's like were the dynasties of the early 2000s or the 80s more difficult because the talent advantage wasn't so stark? Like I, I don't know where to put them. Well, I don't think we know what the talent advantage was back then. But they didn't have it's hard the to quantify. Recruiting rank it's very hard to quantify um, and all these things. You do watch some of those teams, and it does look like a man among boys situation. But all right, I, I think in this case, it, it might just be as simple as holding up trophies, right? There's a reason why it's been almost a century since anybody's done this, because it's very hard to do. And Georgia lost five first-round picks off of its defense from the first title team, and they won it again. Then they lost their defensive coordinator. They still won it. Last year, they lost their offensive coordinator. They lost their quarterback. Still won it. Like, this is, you know, they're on track to do it. They're on track to do it. Clearly, they're the favorite at this point. If you have three in a row, if you finish the drill here, and you want to make the case that this is the best era that we've ever seen in the sport, who else has won three in a row? There's a reason it hadn't happened. USC came close, didn't get the job done. Well, there's one unequivocal fact here, and that is winning a national championship is harder now than it's ever been. I agree. Because you that. have to win a conference championship game, you have to win a semifinal, and you have to win a national title game. Yes. That said, and Matthew C., our token Georgia fan in the chat here, Saban has never gone 8 0 in the SEC for three straight years. Yep. He never won three st- straight national championships, and winning three national titles in a row would make Georgia the best dynasty ever. Austin, what do you think? I agree. It's harder to win now than it's ever been. You know, Georgia is still kind of like in the like potentially like the first half of their dynasty, right? That's mm-hmm. the thing that we yeah. we you know don't know is what is the next ten years of Georgia going to look like. But if the next ten years of Georgia looks like the last five years of Georgia then we're going to say this is the most dominant college football program in history. Well, I think that the fair thing to say is, and we, we, it, it's like hard because we're going to get caught into the three and O aspect or the three in a row. If they win it aspect of this, if you go break down a lot of these Nick Saban stats, you know, he might not have ever gone eight. No, in the sec, but like, I don't think there's been a recruit that's signed with Alabama the entire time he's been there that has stayed three years that hasn't won one. Um, and like all these, like, draft pick stats. There's a lot of Saban stats out there. I wish I would have, you know, had a few to present, but you've heard them. Like, I'm not ready, even if they win three in a row, to say it's better than what Saban has done from 2009 to the present day. That said, what Nick Saban has done to the sport, or did in the sport, was so unprecedented and so dominant that I think he brainwashed us all into thinking that winning a national championship is easier than it is. So I don't want to lose sight of the fact that what Georgia did or could do here this year is got to be one of the most incredible, hardest feats to ever accomplish because, you know, you lose players, you lose the edge, you, you know, it's hard to to get up every week the way that they have now going on three straight years. Um, So I don't think that I would put Georgia above Alabama yet. That said, what Nick Saban did was unprecedented and remarkable, and I think that the odds-on favorite has to be that Kirby is going to duplicate that, which is insane. Like, yeah. I thought we would never see that again. And Nick Saban, who knows how many years he has left. He keeps getting younger every year. Um, but there is going to be a time where Kirby Smart is at Georgia, and that thing is built, and Saban is not at Bama. Like, I know the SEC is getting harder. I know uh, Texas and Oklahoma are on the way. Uh, but Man, like it's just incredible what what he's doing, and I think he deserves to be in that discussion already. Yeah, he hasn't had enough time. I mean, I think you're right that doing what Saban has done for the length that he has done it, and all the different iterations and the changes and evolutions in the program is unbelievable. And that is harder than winning three in a row, I think. But it depends on how you define dynasty, right? Like, 
I think it's plausible that Kirby could do, like you said, what Saban has done in the next decade. He hasn't had that opportunity, but like, you know, Miami didn't quite have the same level of constant success. They did it for short periods of time twice. Same thing with USC. They didn't quite have it quite as, you know, uh, for as long as they did it. I mean, think about so if you want to say four with, a four year window. Play. Yeah. USC like yeah. had two or three years there where they were the king shit in the sport. They couldn't even win in the BCS era. You yeah. know, hard it is to win three in a row in the playoff era playing in that conference. It's yeah. insane. <laughs>